Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our weekly webinar today. Um, today we're going to be talking about the window of tolerance and also um, we're going to be leading you through a coping skill today. Um, my name is Victoria O'Connor. I'm one of the counselors at Genesis and I'll introduce my other counselor. My name is Belinda Cardwell. I'm also a counselor at Genesis. Great. Um, so before we get started, I need to just talk about a few um, things real quick. So just want to remind everyone that this presentation is for educational purposes. Um, and please consider your own situation and safety concerns before putting into practice any of the ideas that we talk about today. Um, so um, a couple things about safety. Please be sure that you're watching this in a safe place where only safe people can hear. Um, maybe consider wearing headphones to help ensure that no one else can hear what you're watching. Um, and maybe also consider clearing your browser history after watching this video if someone monitors your phone or computer. Um, if you are watching this live, and you need to leave the Zoom webinar quickly for safety reasons, um, please keep in mind that you do have to click a couple of things before it completely closes. So you'll have to click end and then also close the Zoom page as well. Um, we are trying to keep confidentiality as much as possible with these webinars. So that means we are gonna ask you to please not use the chat feature on Zoom. If you do use the chat feature, your name and comment will be seen by anyone watching this video live and also the recording of it, which will be posted to YouTube later. Um, and if you're watching this on YouTube, um, please don't leave any comments as your name and comment would be seen by anybody else who watches the video. If you have any questions about our webinar today, um, we will leave our contact information at the end of this um, presentation. Um, and also, we're not going to be responding or monitoring it to um, any comments on the YouTube page. So if you do need to contact us directly or if you do have any qu uh, questions, um, still the best way is to either call or email Belinda or I. Um, and this webinar is not meant to be a replacement for crisis support. So if you are in a crisis situation and you need emergency shelter or you are needing to talk about safety planning, please call our 24 hour hotline number. And that number is 214-946-4357. And if you would like to sign up for counseling or want to talk to a counselor a little bit more about your situation and it's not an emergency, you can call 214-389-7700. Um, and we also have the National Domestic Violence Hotline number here as well. If it's not safe for you to call, there is a chat feature on the National Domestic Violence Hotline website. Um, so you could potentially use that online to chat with someone safely. Um, and we also have the National Suicide Hotline number here as well. Okay, so like I said, today we're going to be talking about the window of tolerance. So the window of tolerance is basically a way that um, we can think about different zones of how we're feeling. So a good way to think about this is with this, um, this idea of a metaphor of sailing. So the window of tolerance, that's your optimal zone. That's where you feel like you're smooth sailing. You can take in things, you can approach things in a calm way, you're smooth sailing. And sometimes, you know, things in our life are too much. Things are too overwhelming. And so maybe it's the experience of things are too windy and our ship is, you know, just feeling really panicked, really overwhelmed. Um, but it could be the opposite. Maybe sometimes things are too much, but we become more numb or more frozen. So I have another way to kind of think about this idea of this window of tolerance here. Um, the window of tolerance there is like this green zone. So like I said, the optimal state, this is where you're feeling calm. You can think logically and clearly. You're feeling like you're able to cope with challenges and any emotions that might come up. And this is where things are just feeling right. Things are feeling good. 
Um, in this window of tolerance, in this zone, you're alert, but you're not too anxious. Um, and you're feeling calm, but you're not feeling too tired. And if you see um, in this hyper arousal zone, I'm gonna bring my pointer up here. So this hyper arousal zone up here, this is where you're feeling anxious, um, emotionally distressed, you're feeling out of control. And this is where your body is starting to prepare you to fight back in a stressful situation, or maybe it's also preparing you to run away from a stressful situation. So that's what we call the fight and flight response. Um, and this, another way to kind of think about this is you're feeling like a volcano that's erupting. That's what this hyper arousal zone feels like. And then on the opposite end, we have this hypo arousal down here in the blue zone. So this is where you're feeling numb, both emotionally and physically. So feeling not really strongly, but also your body is feeling numb. Um, feeling depressed, lethargic, more zoned out. You're not fully present. And this is where the body is taking in um, and, and using that freeze response. So, um, you know, you're not really fully present. It feels like maybe time can even go missing in this zone. Um, and this isn't necessarily something that you choose to do. This is your body, again, your body is taking over and it's going into this frozen state. So again, another way to think about this hypo arousal is feeling more frozen, maybe like an iceberg. Um, so at different points, you know, as we're going about our daily lives, we might have triggering events or stressful events that might come up. Um, so you can have a triggering event, which gets you out of your window and you can go up here to the hyper arousal where you feel like you can't calm down. But it could also be the case that a triggering event does the opposite and you feel more like you're going to shut down here. And so that's where you go into that more hypo arousal state. Um, and we don't typically just jump straight into full hyper arousal or full hypo arousal. Um, usually there are some sort of warning signs or some sort of you know, signs of dysregulation, letting us know that we're about to get into those zones. So if you're up here in this yellow dysregulation, about to get into hyperarousal, some things you might notice is that you're feeling more agitated. Maybe you're feeling more revved up, like more energy in your body, um, feeling anxious. And this is where you're not quite feeling out of control yet, but you're not feeling comfortable. So that could be like this yellow, these like warning signs that you're about to get into that hyper arousal state. And then down here in this one, when you're getting out of your window of tolerance and you're about to be in that hypo arousal state, you might notice some signs that you're starting to shut down. So maybe you're starting to feel spacey, starting to feel sluggish. And again, you're not quite feeling out of control, but you're not feeling comfortable either. So those are some, some good signs to keep in mind that, you know, when you're in this dysregulated zone, whether here or up here, that's when you're noticing you're getting out of your window of tolerance. And we'll talk about um, what to do when you notice that. So we know that trauma does affect the window of tolerance. Stress and trauma, those experiences, they can actually shrink your window of tolerance. So if we come back to this slide, if you think about this window becoming smaller, if the, the green area is, is smaller, that means that these yellow zones and the hyper arousal, the red, or the hypo arousal, the blue, these different zones are bigger. And so if you're getting out of your window of tolerance much quicker, then you're gonna have a harder time feeling like you can calm down, a harder time focusing, a harder time, you know, thinking logically and clearly. And so that we know that you, be, you can become dysregulated much more easily and you can get out of that window of, target, window of tolerance much more quickly and easily if you have experienced trauma. 
Um, and we also know it's harder to stay calm and focused if you're getting out of your window of tolerance more often, like I said. Um, the good news is that with the help of counseling, you can actually um, expand that window of tolerance again. So it can actually get bigger. It's not necessarily that you're always going to have this small window of tolerance. There is the possibility that it can get bigger and you feel like you can handle things um, and tolerate things more easily. So how do you get back into your window of tolerance? I think the biggest key here is to notice when you're starting to become dysregulated. So noticing when you're starting to get in those yellow zones where you're starting to notice those signs that you're about to become hyper aroused or the opposite, that you're starting to become hypo aroused. Um, using these coping skills when you notice those signs and when you're in that dysregulated zone, um, it's gonna be easier to get back into your window if you're using your coping skills then. You can absolutely use coping skills if you are in that full blown hyper arousal or hypo arousal zones too. It just might be easier to use it when you're in that dysregulated zone. So when you notice that you're starting to become dysregulated, um, using these coping skills will be helpful. So we've spent a lot of time last week talking about these and I really encourage you to check out that video on YouTube if you hadn't gotten a chance to see it already. Um, but grounding techniques um, are gonna be really helpful to get you into your window of tolerance. So this is gonna be things like using your senses. Maybe it's noticing, okay, what is everything I can see in front of me? Noticing what is, what can I hear right now? And just listing, what do I hear? Um, maybe it's having something like a, a fidget something, a stress ball, being able to hold this, squeeze this, that's going to be grounding and going to help you um, stay in the present moment and connect with your body. Um, maybe it's listing things in categories. You know, that could also be a way to help use your thinking brain in that moment when you're starting to get overwhelmed. Um, and that can also bring you back into your window of tolerance. So maybe you start to think about every single fruit that you can list or thinking about all the colors that you can come up with or list all the colors you can think of. Um, deep breathing is also another way to help you get back into this window of tolerance. Um, breathing is gonna you know, help calm the systems in your body that are getting you into that more agitated or that more that numb state. And so deep breathing and really focusing on your breathing is going to help calm those systems and help you feel like you can get back into that window. Um, progressive muscle relaxation or guided meditations. Um, there's a lot of free videos on YouTube. You could even type in guided relaxation meditation or guided progressive muscle relaxation and look up something that could help you um, in that moment. There's also different apps that are available for phones. So lots of different ways that you could practice this on your own. We will lead you through a progressive muscle relaxation exercise today in a little bit. And so that's something you could play back to. Um, maybe it's repeating positive affirmations or statements to yourself. When you notice you're getting into that dysregulated zone, starting to repeat those statements, um, those reminders to yourself that could also help you get back into your window. So for example, maybe it's something like, I can handle this, or this will pass. Um, maybe it's something, you know, like, I'm safe right now, or I know I'm safe. If your body is getting triggered and feeling like you're not in a safe situation, you know, being able to remind yourself that you are safe right now, maybe that could help you come back into your window. Uh, maybe another one could be, I know what to do to calm down. And so finding some sort of positive statement or positive affirmation to tell yourself to help you get back into your window. Um, it's, you know, maybe it's not the same for everybody, just finding what works for you. Uh, movement is also something that could help you get back into your window of tolerance if you're feeling dysregulated. So this could be walking. You know, even if you can't necessarily walk outside or walk around the block, you know, even just walking up and down the hall, that's going to be patterned movement. You know, you're, you're stepping left, right, left, right, left, right. That actually helps calm your brain and your body. Um, but this could also be like swaying um, back and forth like this, or maybe rocking. 
Um, you might notice I'm in a swivel chair and actually when I get nervous, I tend to swivel like this. And that's something that my body is instinctively doing to help me calm down. So even something like that could help um, you get back into your window of tolerance. Um, potentially music too. That could be another way to help use like rhythm and to help um, you know, calm your body down. Um, and then finally, distraction coping skills. Those could be helpful in these moments. If you notice you're starting to get agitated or anxious or the opposite, if you notice you're starting to get more numb, using some distraction coping skills could help you to kind of stay back in that window of tolerance. So a lot of people are already doing things that help them distract. Um, so this could be like watching TV or movies. Maybe it's playing a game on your phone maybe reading a book, maybe talking to a friend about something, you know, not the specific thing that's going on for you or the triggering thing. Maybe it's just talking to your support system about something else or just distracting yourself from what's going on. So using these coping skills, when you notice you're dysregulated or when you are in those hyper aroused or hypo aroused states will help you kind of come back into that window where you feel like you're able to calm down and to you know, take in the situation and cope with that well. So now we're going to lead you through. Actually, what I'd like to do, if it's okay, add a mm -hmm. few more things about how you notice when you're getting out of your window of tolerance. Um, you can be impacted by something that's going on internally. Maybe you're, um, you're feeling anxious or it's something hormonal. So it's kind of being driven from something inside you or it could be driven by something outside, like a conversation you just had or traffic you were just in. So if you can realize what the source is, that might help you get back into your window of tolerance um, and understanding what impacts you is important and it's all very personal, as well as what coping skills you need for what it impacts you. For example, music could go both ways. If you're feeling hyper aroused, it could kind of soothing music could bring you down. And if you're feeling hypo aroused, you know, energetic music could bring you up. So it's kind of an example of one coping skill can bring you both ways into your window of relaxation. Mm -hmm. So, um, if, Victoria, are you ready for me to do the progressive muscle relaxation? Yes, yes. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it to this slide of this peaceful scene while you lead us through that. Okay, so as Victoria said earlier, you can get find these on YouTube and they can be anywhere from five minutes to 20 minutes. The one we're gonna do today is only three minutes. So it's short, but it's very effective. So we're doing this exercise because it reduces stress and anxiety. And I want you to tense your muscles, but I don't want you to strain them. And if you have any injuries or pain, you might wanna skip that area those areas um, that are affected, but please pay special attention to the feeling of releasing the tension and the resulting feeling of relaxation. So let's begin. Sit back or lie down in a comfortable position. Close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so. We're gonna begin by taking a deep breath and notice the feeling of air filling your lungs. So take a deep breath and we'll hold it for a few seconds. Now release the breath slowly and let the tension leave your body. We're going to do another deep breath in and hold. And again, slowly release the air. Now even slower, take another deep breath, fill your lungs and hold the air. Slowly release the breath and imagine the feeling of tension leaving your body. Now, move your attention to the feet. Begin to tense your feet by curling your toes and the arch of your foot. Hold the tension and notice what it feels like. Now release the tension in your foot. Notice the new feeling of relaxation. Begin to focus on your lower leg. 
Tense the muscles in your calves, hold them tightly, and pay attention to the feeling of tension. Now, release the tension from your lower legs. Again, notice the feeling of relaxation. Remember to continue taking deep breaths. Next, tense the muscles of your upper leg and pelvis. You can do this by tightly squeezing your thighs together. Make sure you're, you feel the tenseness without going to the point of strain. So we're gonna tense our muscles and then release. And as you release, feel the tension leaving your muscles. Begin to tense your stomach and chest. You can do this by sucking your stomach in, squeeze harder and hold the tension just a little bit longer. Release the tension. Allow your body to go limp. Let yourself notice the feeling of relaxation. Continue taking deep, deep breaths. Breathe in slowly. Notice the air filling your lungs and hold it. Release the air slowly. Feel it leaving your lungs. Next, tense the muscles in your back by bringing your shoulders together behind you. Hold them tightly. Tense them as hard as you can without straining and keep holding. Now release the tension from your back. Feel the tension slowly leaving your body and the new feeling of relaxation. Notice how different your body feels when you allow it to relax. Tense your arms all the way from your hands to your shoulders. Make a fist and squeeze all the way up your arm. Hold it. Now release the tension from your arms and shoulders. Notice the feeling of relaxation in your fingers, hands, arms, and shoulders. Notice how your arms feel limp and at ease. Move up to your neck and your head. Tense your face and your neck by distorting the muscles around your eyes and mouth. Now release the tension. Again, notice the new feeling of relaxation. Finally, tense your entire body. Tense your feet, your legs, your stomach, your chest, your arms, your head, and your neck. Tense harder without straining. Hold the tension. Now release. Allow your whole body to go limp. Pay attention to the feeling of relaxation and how different it is from the feeling of tension. Begin to wake your body up by slowly moving your muscles. Adjust your arms and legs. Stretch your muscles and open your eyes when you're ready. So I hope you feel relaxed and ready to tackle the day. It's been a pleasure being with you here today and we hope you found something new during this webinar. Again, here's our contact information. Feel free to call or email us if you had a question about today's information. Yes. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you everyone for watching. We'll be here again next week at the same time and hope you also can catch us um, on our recordings on YouTube if you're not able to watch live. We'll, we'll keep uploading videos to that page. So thank you so much. Bye-bye.